guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. I'm Alicia and I am so stoked you're here. So many of you have asked for new bentos for so long and I'm excited because today we've got some snack bento boxes inspired by cuisines from around the world and they're all vegetarian. Now, please know that I am not claiming to be an expert chef or trying to necessarily capture the authenticity of the cultures in these recipes. They are inspired by the various cuisines and that's it. I know on YouTube people can get pretty proud or sometimes defensive of their culture and I assure you I am in no way claiming to know something you don't or saying that I'm right and you're wrong or even that I'm not wrong I am just making tasty food that was inspired by the flavors of the culture so give me a break here this video deserves a huge thanks to Thrive Market for teaming up with me to make these bentos possible Thrive Market is an online marketplace where you can shop for thousands of organic foods snacks and natural products but at 25 to 50 percent off of the traditional retail prices it's right in line with their vision to make healthy living easy and affordable. Today, if you use the link in my description, you can get an extra 25% off your order of already lowered prices. Let's get started fairly close to home in Southern California with my Mexican inspired bento snack box. First, we're making some black bean crackers. I add dried black beans to a food processor to make into a flour. You can buy black bean flour already ground, but it does come with the price tag and making your own really isn't hard, it just takes some time. You have to sort of let it run for a few minutes, then rest, and then just keep going until it's ground to a flour. Make sure that you don't let your machine overheat. I mix that flour in some salt and then add in oil. I slowly add in water until I get a spreadable batter. Drop spoonfuls onto a baking sheet and spread into crackers. Bake for about seven minutes and then flip and bake for a few more. Make sure they don't burn. Cool off before enjoying. Wow, these are almost like a blue corn chip, but with black beans and more of a cracker texture. So fun and I love how few ingredients they require. Chips are best served with dip, am I right? How about the easiest avocado dip ever, combining avocado that's been mashed, yogurt or sour cream, lime juice, garlic powder, and salt. Sure, it's basic, but sometimes simple is best. This is creamy, savory, and totally a perfect match for my crackers. Next, I've got some Mexican style stone ground chocolate, which I got from Thrive Market. Its variation is dark and salted almond, yum. You can taste the quality. It's unrefined and minimally processed, meaning I can actually absorb those cacao benefits. And I love that it's organic and direct trade certified. It tastes dark and very satisfying. I try to fit veggies into every box and jicama is an easy one to get creative with. It's a crisp white fleshed tuber that tastes great on its own, a bit sweet like a carrot and crisp like an apple or radish. But for my inspired bento box, I'm tossing it with a bit of lime juice, chili powder, and salt. Man, that takes this veggie to a new level, making it even more fun to eat. Last, I've got these plantain chips from Thrive Market. Previously, I tried the plain flavor and they were so good, addicting, but they just came out with this new chili lime flavor and I thought they would be perfect for this box. They're crunchy, flavorful, but not spicy. And that's the first snack bento box, thanks to Mexican inspired flavors, spices, and ingredients. What's next? We're traveling over 9,000 miles for our next box, which is inspired by Indian flavors. I start with some mango, a commonly used fruit in Indian cuisine, and one I grew up eating too. I toss that with pomegranate and lime zest to add a fun flavor punch. I also toss some cucumber with a bit of garam or tandoori masala and salt. A small change in the way you serve fresh produce can really go a long way with making it more enticing to eat. Masalas are Indian spice blends that can vary. Garam masala usually includes peppers, chilies, cinnamon, cardamom, and coriander as a base. It is a spice, but it's not spicy, so even if you aren't about heat, you might enjoy it. The cool cucumber helps balance the flavors too. From Thrive Market, I got these Bombay Spice Crunchy Chickpeas. They're seasoned with spices like garlic, paprika, onion powder, and turmeric, giving the chickpeas both color and flavor. This is one of my favorite ways to indulge my crunchy cravings, and these actually are very crunchy and have a very bold taste, which I love. 
And last but not least, I've got candied fennel seed, which I'm making on my own. Now this one is very near and dear to my heart. I grew up eating this. We kept it on the counter at my house and my grandparents, and I grew up calling it somf, which is Hindi for fennel seeds. When it's candied, many people know it as mukwas. If you've never had it, it's pretty much fennel seeds in a candy coating. It's traditionally used as a breath freshener after a meal and it's great for digestion. I'm making mine without the food dye and using some coconut sugar instead of all regular sugar. I bring half regular sugar along with half coconut sugar and water to a boil over high heat, stirring until a syrup forms. Look for the bubbles. It'll take three to five minutes and then reduce the heat to medium and add your fennel seeds. I got these at Thrive Market, which was about half the price of my local grocery store. Spices are a really great option to look for on Thrive Market site if you use them regularly because they sell them in packages that are a bit bigger and less expensive. And in case you didn't know, the Thrive Market website is awesome. You can filter the products by whatever health values or dietary preferences you have. So paleo, gluten-free, raw, vegan, they even have a keto in a Whole30 section. It makes it so easy to peruse. Back to the candy. Stir until the mixture crystallizes and it will happen quickly. The fennel should look dry. Then remove the mixture from the heat and stir another 10 to 15 seconds until the seeds can separate easily. Please note you cannot use all coconut sugar. I tried and it didn't work. Like I said, I was raised to have these after a meal for breath and digestion, but they're also great on salads, desserts, oats, and more. These actually taste almost the same, sugared fennel, but without the food dye crisped coating. But they're still crunchy with a sweet and licorice-y taste. If you aren't a fan of the licorice-y taste of fennel, it may not be for you, but I love it and I don't actually like licorice. Hmm. This box really is close to my heart. So many of these ingredients were inspired by my own family and childhood, and it's such a fun way to add variety to my snacks. Okay, next we've got less distance to travel, less than 4,000 miles to the Mediterranean, which provides inspiration for our next snack box. I've got some pita bread to start, and I went with whole wheat, but there are so many gluten-free versions out there now too, if you need. Still, pita just wouldn't be as good without a dip. Today, I'm making lebne. If you've never had the real thing, either in the Mediterranean or at a restaurant, it is a thick, tangy, and creamy yogurt cheese. Pretty much, it is a super strained Greek yogurt. I'm going to show you how I made it using store-bought whole milk yogurt. First, I line a large sieve with a few layers of cheesecloth. You could also use a tea towel, an old t-shirt, or even coffee filters, anything that will strain. Set the sieve on top of a deep bowl and make sure that there's a few inches in between. Add your yogurt to the sieve and gather the edges of the cloth to cover the yogurt. Refrigerate for two to three days. So for regular Greek yogurt, it's usually less than a day, maybe just overnight. But for lebne, more time straining is what gives it that nice thick texture. Then squeeze out any excess liquid and discard what's in the bowl. The yogurt will thicken similar to a goat cheese. It's ready to go, but I like to mix together some extra virgin olive oil. And from the beginning, one of my favorite Thrive Market products has been the extra virgin olive oil. I know it's one of the founder's favorites as well, and the quality is top notch, but I seriously love the packaging. I also add some za'atar spice, minced parsley, and salt. Whisk that together and then mix it into the lebne, seasoning to taste. It will marinate more flavor into the dip as it sits. Whoa, I was surprised. This really tastes like the real thing. And I used whole milk yogurt, so I didn't really even have to start from scratch. To add another dipper and get some more veggies in, I'm adding bell peppers, another common ingredient used in Mediterranean dishes. Finally, I'm making some feta stuffed olives. It is super easy. I got these olives from Thrive Market, green and Kalamata pitted olives, both organic and solid ingredients, and again, about half the price of what my grocery store offers. I bought a block of feta cheese and sliced that into small rectangles about the size of my olives and pits. Just stuff them in there. It is so easy and such a satisfying salty bite. Olives and cheese are a classic combo, but the healthy fat content is also going to help keep me full, which is exactly what I want my snack to do. And that's the snack box inspired by flavors and ingredients of the Mediterranean. I love the color and variety. One more destination today, it's less than 5,000 miles to East Asia for our Asian-inspired bento snack box. I'm making mushroom chips? I know it sounds strange, but just bear with me. I take portobello mushrooms and slice them super thin. Use a mandolin if you can, a knife is fine, but either way, just be safe. 
I mix together some melted ghee and sesame oil and add the mushrooms to a rack on a baking sheet. Brush both sides with ghee and then sprinkle the top with salt. Cook for about 45 to 50 minutes until they're as crunchy as you'd like. Holy moly, these were a pleasant surprise. The sesame flavor with the rich and nutty ghee brings out something special in the mushrooms. These are better served immediately but are totally still tasty later. I love that I can get my crunchy fix from a vegetable. Well, I guess technically it's a fungus. For more veggie goodness, I'm adding some snap peas. Well, I guess those are actually a legume, right? Who can know? I'm also making a super easy Asian flavors inspired dip because I am not huge on raw veggies and dip always makes it easier. I mixed together mayo. I've got Primal Kitchen's avocado oil mayo here, which I got on Thrive Market. Again, 25% cheaper than the specialty grocery store nearby. It has super solid ingredients and makes me happy to know that I don't need to give up mayonnaise. I also add soy sauce, fresh basil, sesame oil, sesame seeds, rice vinegar, and dry mustard. It's easy, just mix it together, but you get so much flavor. Almost like a spicy mayo, but without the kick of heat and upped in savory goodness. Next, I have another crunchy snack, these sriracha cashews. And they are actually Thrive Market's own brand, and I love that they really try to keep their ingredients clean and healthy in addition to being affordable. These have the flavor of sriracha, but they aren't super spicy, which is perfect for my taste. Okay, I had to finish out this box and the day with a sweet recipe, and I may have saved the best for last, sesame brittle. I heat coconut sugar and maple syrup over medium heat in a saucepan until bubbly. Lower the heat and add sesame seeds and a pinch of salt. These sesame seeds are also from Thrive Market, and like I said before, if you use spices and seeds for cooking regularly, definitely check out their options because sesame seeds are typically a higher priced item, especially for the amount needed, and it was much more affordable on Thrive Market, thank goodness. Stir continuously for about 10 minutes until the seeds begin to brown, but don't let them burn or the pan smoke because they will turn quickly. Spread the sticky mixture onto a baking sheet or one of those Silpat liners if you have one and smooth it out evenly. Work quickly because the sugar will set. Once smooth, allow to dry and it will happen pretty fast, just a couple of minutes, and then cut into squares or bars before it cools or else it will be hard to do later. Cool for a bit and keep in an airtight container for up to two weeks. Like I said, these might be the best thing we've made all day. Sweet with a hint of salt, a nice crunchy treat, and it's totally vegan and sweetened with natural sugars. There you go, some bento snack boxes inspired by cuisines from around the world. I hope you had fun watching and got some new ideas. And remember, you can get so many of the products I used here and thousands more on Thrive Market. Use the link in the description for an additional 25% off the price, plus a 30-day free trial, and if you spend over $49, you get free shipping every single time. I always spend at least that much because they have so many great finds that I can't get anywhere else, especially for the price. And again, a disclaimer about the recipes I shared today. If you are from one of these places or part of any of these cultures, know that I'm not trying to offend you if something isn't authentic here. I'm simply drawing inspiration from these cuisines, ingredients, and flavors to make my own healthy lifestyle a little more fun and interesting. And I hope that you found some fun inspiration from them too. I appreciate you being here. I will see you next week with a brand new episode. And remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.